Hello and welcome back. My name's Chris and this is everything that happened in the automotive world in the last week. Now this is a series I do every week, just talk about all the news that has happened with cars and everything. Now this wasn't the busiest week ever, but I'm still going to report on the few things that did happen. Now if you do like this video, leave a like and subscribe and just like go through the other videos. If you like this one, you'll probably like the other ones as well. Anyways, I've got a new camera, so hopefully it looks a bit more professional than usually. Um, I still need a new like lighting setup and everything, and a new lens and all that shit, so it's still not going to be like crazy professional like fancy YouTuber, but I'm trying, okay? Just give it time, baby steps, hopefully by next year I'll be like professional and stuff. Yeah. For our first story, Hyundai Samurai chops the Veloster in. Wait, Samurais are like Japanese, aren't they? Let me just like quickly Google something, I want to see what's the Samurai equivalent of Korean culture. Let's let's just look up this one quickly. Yeah. Give me two seconds, guys. Right. I hope I'm spelling it correctly. Okay. How how a rang how a rang like how a rang chopped. I hope a how a rang. It's got a sword. It wouldn't be as cool if it doesn't. Let's let's quickly search that one as well. How how a Rang, rang, picture. It's got like a sword thing, yeah. It how a rang chopped the Velosta in. Mm. Anyways, the point is, Hyundai axed off the Velosta in. Why did they do this? Well, Hyundai says that the decision to kill off the Velosta in is due to the introduction of the new Elantra in and Kona in. So the Velosta in is no more because they introduced a sedan and an SUV compact. I feel like there's still space for a hot hatch in that like lineup, but apparently I Hyundai doesn't think that. This does like this is sad to me. The Veloster N is a really good looking, good sounding, and like just aesthetically pleasing hot hatch. It's just a cool car. They are a bit expensive, but they're like properly quick for a front wheel drive hot hatch, and it's just like a cool car. They look sporty. They sound nice. They've got a throaty sound. It's it's just a cool car, and it's sad that it's being killed off because of a SUV and a, a, a sedan. Doesn't make sense, but yeah. Anyways, next up, BW has announced a second generation Amarok. Now the new Amarok will be produced here in South Africa, and it will go on sale in the first quarter of 2023. Now the new Amarok will share the same platform as the Ranger, and it will be built in the same factory as the Ranger as well, a Ford factory here in South Africa. Now imagine buying a VW Amarok thinking this is German engineering and then later finding out that it's it's built in the Ford factory. And not like an American Ford factory, no, South African. So it's South African Ford engineering and it's a VW. Anyways, the new Volkswagen Amarok is 96mm longer than the outgoing model and its wheelbase has been extended by 173mm. Because it's longer, it has more cabin space. The growth spurt also results in better 4x4 capability due to its improved approach angles and it now boasts a weighting depth of 800mm. Volkswagen has also confirmed that there will be 5 turbocharged engines all of these engines are from Ford, of course, since it's technically a Ford, which I see nothing wrong with. The Ford engines are good, and I mean, I really like the Ranger. It's a good pickup truck. I just think it's funny. I mean, if I want a Ford Ranger, which I do think is a good pickup truck, I'd just buy a Ford Ranger. Like, why would I buy a VW that's technically a Ranger, but it's a VW? So, yes, it looks different than the Ranger, but if I want a Ranger, I'll just buy a Ranger. You get where I'm going there? But, but it does look cool, I have to say. It's, it's a good looking truck and I'm sure it's gonna be good off-road and like just good in general since it's technically a Ranger. Anyways, I, I like digress badly there, sorry. From a pickup truck to a car that can literally fit on the back of said pickup truck. This is the Renault 5 Diamond. It is a new car and Renault made it in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Renault 5, which is one of the company's all-time best sellers. Renault and French interior designer Pierre Gonalons created the 5 Diamond an electrified resto mod. This resto mod features diamond-like headlights, pink paint and gold trim. You know what? I'm pretty damn sure my sister had a Barbie play toy car thing that looked exactly like this. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure. Anyways, I digress. This little Renault will have an electric powertrain, a broken ass steering wheel and biosecurity doors. Now I'm sorry, if you have money to have a fingerprint scanner on your door lock of the car, 
Why don't they have money to fix the bloody steering wheel? I mean, look at this thing. Don't tell me that was on purpose. I, I am joking. I, I know it was on purpose. But you have to agree. That's the dumbest looking steering wheel you have ever seen in your life. I mean, it, it, it even looks like they just like spilled paint on it. Going off of the like shape, the shape is like, I've got a lot to say on that. But I mean, even just the white, I, I, it looks crap. Let's be honest, that's not a good looking wheel. Anyways, if you didn't know, I actually owned a Renault 5, like, back in the day. And then I made a video on it. So I'll link that here. That guy had some really funny quirks. That thing, like, I only made one video on it. And it's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. Because that car was just like, yeah, it was bad. But it was funny because of how bad it was. So, after this video, go and watch my Renault 5 video. Yeah, I'll link it. Anyways, on to our last story. And I've left the best for last. Ferrari is set to compete in the Le Mans once again. The automaker released a teaser photo of the car in Wednesday, and images from the car's first shakedown at Ferrari's Furiano circuit has also surfaced online. This car is built to Le Mans LMH regulations. This means that they have a lot of freedom to make the car crazy fast. The chassis will be made in-house by Ferrari, rather than by a specified partner. Other than that, we don't know much, but I can tell you that I am super excited to see this thing in action next year. Anyways, that's all for this video. And I think I'm going to play you guys out by this song played by like car horns. Yeah. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I've got many more videos on car-related topics, so if you like anything car-related, I'm your guy. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll check you guys in... Sorry, I just knocked you. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?